Hello, everyone. Um, Steve, would you mind ringing the bell for us? And uh, we'll begin our worship service with the ringing of the church bell. So uh, welcome to our worship service uh, for Lost Creek and McCoysville on October 10th. I want to share some announcements with you. Today is Stu Bear, uh, or not Stu Bear, well it is Stu Bear Sunday. Today is Stu Bear Sunday, yes. Um, here at Lost Creek we dress down, at McCoysville we wear a hat and shirt. Um, we are continuing to receive donations for the crop walk, which was last quarter uh, at McCoysville and Lost Creek. Uh, this uh, quarter, Stu Bear is collecting for the Wings of Kindness, wearing my 5K shirt from one of the past runs. Uh, and just a reminder, the Wings of Kindness Foundation provides financial assistance to local children and organizations that assist in meeting the needs of young people in the Juniata River Valley. The goals of the, for the foundation include providing resources to underprivileged children for things such as scholarships, college textbooks, food, clothing items, camp tuition, and many other special needs. The Wings of Kindness Foundation is a nonprofit organization operated entirely by non-paid volunteers. The foundation was started in March of 2002 in memory of Mark, Marcy, Elena, and Amanda Panabaker. So uh, thank you to everyone who continues to uh, feed Stu Bear. Okay. And um, just a moment here. I want to get myself back in there. There we go. And... But uh, this afternoon is um, the crop walk. And as I mentioned, uh, we're collecting uh, more items. And you can come and walk with us if you want to. Let me know if, if you want to be on the team. The crop walk starts at 2 o'clock. Uh, Sign-up starts at 1.30, and it will be at the Walker Township Park there near the Rudders. Um, the Lost Creek women meet this Tuesday at 7 p.m., we have our congregational lunch at the Bread of Life on Wednesday at 11.30 a.m. We're going to have a meeting at McCoysville on Thursday at 9.30 a.m. And we're going to talk about the first four sessions of the prayer course. And so anyone who would like to participate in that is welcome to join us. And then Thursday evening at 7 o'clock, we'll continue with uh, Lesson 4 on um, the prayer course here at Lost Creek and by Zoom. Sa uh, Saturday coming up, the, we have a food pantry distribution at McCoysville, and we could, we could really use some help getting things off the truck into the building and then back out to the truck, and also to help out during the time that people are collecting food. Uh, we unload the truck at 9 and distribute food at 10, so let me know if you're interested. But also over here at the Lion's Den, they're doing a 5K uh, to support the Szerski family, and that starts at 9 a.m. Next Sunday is Special Offering Sundays. We collect our Joyful Noise offering here at Lost Creek and our Meals and Wheels offering at McCoysville. Coming up on October 24th, Lost Creek is collecting a love offering that will uh, allow the church to buy gift cards for our college students to uh, ask God's blessing on them as they prepare for their finals. And then coming up on October 25th, will be our uh, free drive through senior luncheon. Uh, we'll be uh, making spaghetti, a spaghetti meal, putting it in to-go containers, and then the uh, people can drive into the parking lot, grab their to-go boxes, and, and head on home. So we'll need to start promoting that. Um, we've got the sign-ups for the food there, and um, next Sunday we'll start uh, collecting uh, volunteers to help out with that. Don't forget the meal packing events coming up 
on uh, the 30th at the Port, Port Royal uh, Fairgrounds, uh, starts at 9 a.m. And then McCoysville is celebrating 220 years of ministry on October 31st. So you're welcome to come and join us for worship at 11 a.m. or come down for the open house from 12.30 to 3.30 and check out the memorabilia and uh, get a tour of the church and hear about the history. I am collecting photos and information to do a uh, All Saints Day video to remember our loved ones who have passed and also a Veterans Day video. So if you have uh, information you'd like to share with me, you can text it to me, uh, email it to me, or just uh, give me the picture and the information. Are there any other announcements? All right, uh, if there are no other announcements, uh, let's prepare our hearts and minds to worship God as we listen to our meditation music. The true light, which enlightens everyone, has come into the world. 
To all who receive him, who believe in his name, he gives the power to become children of God. The scripture focus for our worship today is taken from Exodus chapter 33. Verses 12 through 17. Listen now to the word of the Lord. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways, so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people. He said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And Moses said to him, If your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people, unless you go with us? In this way we shall be distinct, I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked. For you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. The Lord always blesses the reading and the hearing of his holy word. Let us pray. Eternal God, we long for truths that are lasting, yet we want our faith to be alive to the people and problems of today. As we move forward in an ever-changing world, may faith in Christ be our anchor, and your love be our guide through the presence and power of the Spirit. Unite our hearts, even as we unite our voices in your praise. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And uh, let's uh, wish everyone peace be with you. Peace be with you and also with you. So uh, Barb H. and Tessa. And Noreen are worshiping with us. And Faye. And Chris. And Diane. And Barb and Rich. And Alicia. And Debbie. And Sue. And Linda. And Nan. And Sandy and Dave. Uh, if I missed your name, I'm sorry, but uh, peace be with you to everyone who's worshiping with us at home, and peace uh, from them to you and from you to them. And we do have a minor miracle at Lost Creek today. There are more people on this side of the church than are on this side of the church. Not by much, but there is. You guys won today. Congratulations. <laughs> um, Let's uh, join together in singing hymn number 85, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. Please stand.
You may be seated. And I invite us to join together in the prayer of confession printed in the bulletin. Let us pray. Almighty God, you love us, but we have not loved you. You call, but we have not listened. We walk away from neighbors in need, wrapped in our own concerns. God of grace, help us to admit our sin, so that as you come to us in mercy, we may repent, turn to you, and receive forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Remember the words of the prophet Jeremiah when he wrote, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will put my law within them, and I will write it upon their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, God has fulfilled his promise. You are forgiven. Amen. Having been assured of God's grace and mercy in our lives, let us respond with an affirmation of faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And let's stand and sing the Gloria Patri together. <coughs> Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, it is now and ever shall be, world without end. As we turn to our time of prayer, uh, this week, Warfordsburg's Presbyterian Church is in our prayers. Let us pray for the session and other leaders in this time of pastoral transition. May they continue to experience and share the warmth of faith and the strength of Christian community. So please keep uh, Warfordsburg Presbyterian Church in your prayers. Um, I don't know what sort of search they're in, whether they're searching for a pastor or searching for next steps for their lives, but uh, keep them in your prayers. We also have some uh, very important people. Uh, Paul Slingland Jr. has a birthday on Tuesday. On Wednesday, Jerry and Rose celebrate an anniversary. Happy anniversary to them. And on Saturday, uh, Ethan has a birthday, and Adam Waite has a birthday. Are there any other birthdays or anniversaries that we know of? You have one this You have a birthday this week? Oh, congratulations. Happy birthday. Uh, what day? The 12th. Okay. So, so Hazel has a birthday on the 12th. And uh, Adam and Kristen's anniversary was when? The third. The third right. Our birthday is the 17th, not Tuesday. Okay. <coughs> Kirsten. Kirsten. Kirsten Hackenberger's birthday is on the 17th. Uh, well, let's sing uh, Happy Birthday, God Bless You to our birthday people. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. 
Um, as, I've, uh, as we normally do, we will share specific joys and concerns um, at the end of our service. So if you are worshiping with us at home and you have somebody you want us to pray for or you want to share a joy, uh, you can use uh, Facebook Messenger or text me and let me know. Um, Dave Brown gave me this calendar of uh, religious jokes, and I thought this one on, from October 6th was appropriate for um, our theme uh, on intercession that we're looking at today. There's a little girl that says, Dear God, it rained our whole vacation, and boy, was my father mad. He said some things about you that people are not supposed to say, but I hope you do not hurt him anyway. So, um, a little girl giving us an example of intercessory prayer there. Uh, are there any uh, general joys or concerns that we want to share this morning? Very happy to have Reese with us. And uh, Dick and Loretta, welcome back. <laughs> or are you heading out? I always get confused. Soon, okay. <laughs> uh, any other joys or concerns? I am grateful we have our crop walk today and it's rain or shine. I'm praying that the uh, weather man is right and it'll be, uh, it will have stopped raining before then. But I am grateful to Kate and to Tessa and I think maybe even Hazel and Roger, I'm not sure, um, are coming out to help us uh, with registration since our registration people won't be able to be there. So um, thank you to them for helping out with that and to everyone who has given generously to the crop walk. Any concerns? Okay. Um, and we'll uh, pray, we'll remember to pray for Michael. And uh, Tessa told me your birthday was coming up on the 12th. Well, uh, we will move to our prayer, and each of our petitions ends, In your mercy, I invite you to respond, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Confident in the gracious and ever-widening mercy of God, we pray for the world, the body of Christ, and all who yearn for wholeness of life. Open doors to justice and peace among the nations of the world, O God, that made in your image we might all live in the hope and joy of your saving power. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Level the mountains of bigotry and discrimination, of hatred and prejudice in our country and in our communities, O oh God, that we may regard people without partiality and show no deference to one over the other. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Rescue us from wasteful ways, O oh God, that we would learn to be caring stewards of all that you have made in the air, on the earth, and beneath the waters. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Call us by name, O God, as we daily remember our baptism into the, into the death and resurrection of Jesus, your Son, that we might be his hands and feet in the world. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Reveal to us your face, O God, in the faces of persons most in need in our communities, the aged, the young, the abused, the homeless, the addicted, and the mentally ill, that they may know your liberating love. Hear especially the prayers we lift before you now in the silence of our hearts. Show us your beauty, O God, in the holiness of those who have gone before us, that their lives may continue to stir us up to ardent service in the world. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen to us when we call upon you, most merciful God, and grant us grace to entrust our lives and our world to your unfailing love, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who also taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'd invite us to stand and let's join together in singing hymn 385, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. So, um, in the movie Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, Gene, uh, Gene Wilder plays uh, Willy Wonka, who uh, his chocolate factory has been silent for years, and then suddenly there's this massive activity, and Willy Wonka sends out chocolate bars all over the world, and wrapped in five of these chocolate bars are golden tickets. And whatever children find a golden ticket will get to come and have a special tour through his, fact his, through his factory. And uh, four of the kids who get the tickets are all you know, very wealthy and have you know, everything they need. But one of them is a little poor boy, Charlie, who lives just down the street from the factory. The five arrive and go on the tour. Uh, now, each of the children has their own... Um, temptations and gives into their own indiscretions and uh, even Charlie uh, breaks one of the rules. All of them break a rule, even Charlie does, although Charlie uh, isn't found out until the very end. But the other kids, uh, when they break a rule, it's pretty obvious they've done something wrong. And uh, for example, we have uh, Violet uh, Beauregard who loves to chew gum. And Willy Wonka has invented a new type of gum that she just has to try. Pay attention to the way Willy Wonka tries to stop her from chewing the gum. 
Finito. That's all? That's all? Don't you know what this is? My gum, it's gum. Wrong. It's the most amazing, fabulous, sensational gum in the whole world. What's so fab about it? This little piece of gum is a three-course dinner. Bull. No, roast beef, but I haven't got it quite right yet. I don't care. Oh, I wouldn't do that. I really wouldn't. So long as it's gum, then that's for me. Buy it. Now, don't you do anything stupid. <gasps> What's it taste like? Madness. It's tomato soup. It's hot and creamy. I can actually feel it running down my throat. Stop. Don't. Why doesn't she listen to Mr. Wonka? Because, Charlie, she's a nitwit. It sure is great soup. Hey, the second course is coming up. Roast beef and a baked potato. Mmm. With sour cream? <laughs> What's for dessert, baby? Dessert? Here it comes. Blueberry pie and cream. It's the most marvelous blueberry pie I've ever face. tasted. Holy Toledo, what's happening to your face? Cool it, Dad. Let me finish. Yeah, but your face is turning blue. Violet, you're turning violet, Violet. What are you talking about? I told you I hadn't got it quite right yet. You can say that again. Look what it's done to my kid. It always goes wrong when we come to the dessert. Mm. Always. Violet, what are you doing now? You're blowing up. I feel fine. I'm not surprised. What's happening? You're blowing up like a balloon. Like a blueberry. Somebody do something. Call a doctor. Stick her with a pin. She'll pop. It happens every time. They all become blueberries. <laughs> so, um, she can't help herself. She's got to chew his gum, even though he says, I wouldn't do that. I really wouldn't. And then notice a little bit later, you know, he, he's so invested in trying to stop her. Stop. Don't. <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of like he's told her what she should not do. She's warned her that it's dangerous. But if she just decides to break the rules, then she gets what's coming to her, right? She gets the, the consequences of her actions. He's not going to go out of his way to, to cause, stop that from happening. This morning, uh, as we continue on our uh, stories about prayer... Uh, we are talking about intercession. Uh, Pete Gregg shares one dictionary definition of intercession, to intervene or mediate between two parties as the equal friend of both. So when we're talking about intercessory prayer, on the one hand, we are friends with God. And on the other hand, we are friends with the person that we are praying for. And we're supposed to be equal friends mediating between the two, bringing, their con bringing the concerns of the person to God. Now, there are some people that, yes, we feel very friendly towards them. We sincerely desire good for them. We get down on our knees and we pray wholeheartedly for them. But we also know that we are supposed to be praying for everybody else out in the world. Jesus says even to pray for our enemies. And so maybe we get ourselves to the point where we can pray for other people. We know they have problems. We know things are not going well in their lives. We're supposed to pray for them. And so maybe we lift up their concerns to God also. But do we really feel like equal friends with them? Or are we more like uh, Willy Wonka, uh, just sort of sitting back and saying, don't, stop. And if they get, the, the, you know, if something bad happens to them because they decided not to listen to God and not to listen to our warnings, well, you know, they get the consequences that are coming to them. It's uh, intercessory prayer. You're supposed to be an equal friend with both. But I think if we're honest with ourselves, there's some people we probably pray for and it's more like, uh, God, teach them a lesson here, more than it is God bless them and give them good. Think about the story of Moses in our scripture lesson today. The passage that I read is actually comes at the end of a dis discussion between Moses and God that started a couple of chapters earlier with the story of the golden calf. Moses has gone up on the mountain at Sinai to receive the commandments and God's commands for the people. He's been up there for more than 40 days, and the people have gotten bored, and they say to Aaron, make an image of a God for us to lead us to the promised land. We don't know what happened to Moses, and we're not waiting for him anymore. 
And my favorite part of the story is uh, Aaron collects all the gold from them. And uh, when he explains what happened to Moses, he says, I threw the gold in the fire and out came this calf. But anyway, so the people are worshiping this golden calf. Moses is up on the mountain with God. And God says to, to Moses, your people who you brought up out of Egypt are worshiping false gods. I am going to wipe them off the face of the earth, and I am going to make a new nation out of your descendants. And Moses responds, wait a minute, they're your people, you brought them up out of Egypt. If you wipe them off the face of the earth, then the Egyptians are going to be laughing at you. You're going to be the laughing stock of the world. The Egyptians are going to say, you brought them out here into the wilderness to kill them off. You can't do that to them. And remember your promise. You made a promise to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob that you would make a nation out of them and you would bless the world from them. And you keep your promises. So a little while later, God says, okay, I'm not going to wipe them off the face of the earth. I will send my angel with you and you lead them to the promised land. But they are a stiff-necked people. They're going to do something else that makes me angry. And I will end up wiping them off the face of the earth. I'm not going with you. And Moses says to God, wait a minute. You said I found favor in your sight. That you care about me. And what about your people here? Don't you care about them? You have to go with us to the promised land. You can't just send an angel to lead us. You have to go with us to the promised land because I am your prophet. These are your people. And that is how the world will know that we have found favor in your sight is by you going with us. And so God finally says, okay, I will go with you. Now, we have a very serious question to ask here. Is God really as petulant as we are? I mean, here's God. His plan doesn't go right. And what does he do? He blames somebody else. Moses, you brought them up. They're your people. And would God really be the type of person who gets angry at us and decides to wipe us off the face of the planet? Last week, we talked about trying to discern God's will and align our will with God's. And one of the things we talked about was that the whole Bible is God's word to us, but Jesus Christ is the word of God. In Jesus Christ, God reveals himself in a way like no other. And so we start by following Christ. We listen to what Jesus teaches. We watch what Jesus does. We learn from Jesus what God is really like. And what we, is revealed by God in Jesus is that God loves everyone. And God wants to redeem everyone from sin and heal their brokenness and bring them back into relationship with God. In fact, when we reject God's Son and nail him to a cross and kill him, Jesus says, Father, forgive them. And on Pentecost, that's exactly what happens. The people cry out, what are we going to do? We killed God's son. And Peter says, repent and believe. And God forgives. That is what God is like. And we look back at this story, and we see a God who appears to be as petulant as we are, and we have to ask ourselves, what's really going on here? And I think what's really going on here is that God is inviting Moses to be a part of his redemptive work in the world. Remember that through the Israelites, God is revealing himself to the world and is beginning to work to a blessing upon the whole world. And God is inviting Moses to be a part of his work of re the redemption of the world. But he has to be an equal friend with God and with the Israelites. Just before the passage that we read, we talk, we, uh, there's a section in there that talks about how 
uh, Moses would go out to the tent of meeting and would meet with God and that there was nobody else that met with God face to face like a friend the way Moses and God did. So Moses is definitely a friend with God. But if Moses is going to join God in God's work of being, of redeeming the world, starting with the Israelites, Moses can't be like Willy Wonka. I give you the rules. I wouldn't do that. No, I really wouldn't. Don't stop. Well, you get the consequences of your behaviors. Moses has to care about, he has to love, he has to desire the, the good for the Israelites as much as God does. And I think this dialogue between God and Moses is intended to get Moses on board, to, to build up in him those feelings of love and care and concern for the Israelites the way God does. So that finally Moses claims the Israelites as his own people. And he is willing to intercede on their behalf, to come between the Israelites and God and to lift up their sins, to lift up their problems, to lift up their joys to God as an equal friend of both. And in that way, Moses uh, intercedes for them and becomes part of God's plan of redemption for the world. I think that's important to, to remember, that God invites Moses to be a part of his, his plan of redemption, to intercede on behalf of the uh, Israelites, because God invites us to do the same. God wants us to be a part of his redemption for the world, to bring healing to the world. And one of the ways we do that is through intercessory prayer, praying for the needs and the concerns of others and lifting them up to God. You know, there's, there's times where somebody has a problem and they share their problem with us and there is nothing we can personally do for them. There is no way we can help them. And so what do we say? I'll pray for you, as if prayer for them is the, the, the last resort. It's all we got left. But that's not the way God designed this world. God designed this world that we would participate in the healing of the world through our prayers. God is inviting us to be a part of that healing work that he's doing. And one of the ways we do it is through our intercessory prayers. Think about uh, what Paul says about Jesus in Romans 8, in 8.34. He asks the question, who is there who can condemn us for our sins? Well, obviously it's Jesus. Our sins sent Jesus to the cross, right? And yet he says it is Christ Jesus who died, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Now think about that for a minute. He died on the cross. He's already died on the cross to save us from our sins. He's already been raised from the dead to give us the promise of eternal life. He's already sitting at the right hand of God where he rules over all things. And yet what's he doing? He's interceding for us. God's work of bringing healing into our lives and in the world continues to go on. And Jesus part continues to participate in that work in part by praying for us. And that is what God is asking us to do, to follow Christ's example, to intercede for our friends and family, yes, for People who obviously deserve to be prayed for, yes. But even for those who don't listen to us, who don't um, obey God's commands, even those who would be our enemies, God calls on us to intercede on their behalf so that God's work of redemption can be done in their lives and in the world. And so it's important for us 
to not only pray for our own needs, but to pray for the needs of others. But not like Willy Wonka, where, dear God, help them to see the, see the light, to do the right thing. Oh, too bad. They didn't. So sad. Not like Willy Wonka. We are to be like Moses. We are to be like Christ. To be equal friends with those we are praying for and with God. To really love, care, and be concerned for their well-being. And pray that God can make a difference in their lives. And God will redeem their lives and redeem our world and bring healing to all the brokenness we see around us. Amen. Uh, Let's uh, join together in uh, singing the doxology as we offer God's blessings on our uh, offerings. Please stand. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us pray. O God, through the offering of these gifts, we become a more open people, open-minded in hearing your word and wisdom, open-hearted in healing a broken world, open-handed in heeding your call to charity and enacted love. With thanks for all good gifts, we present a portion of our substance in the whole of ourselves. Amen. Let's remain standing and we'll join together in singing hymn number 489, Christ for the World We Sing. for the world we sing, the world to Christ we bring, with loving zeal, the poor and them that mourn, the faint and overborn, sin sick and sorrow worn, whom Christ doth heal. You may be seated. And uh, Max Henry is going to play our postlude music for us, and he's going to play Amazing Grace.
Thank you, Max. And uh, let's stand and we'll sing our closing praise song, This Is The Day. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. And uh, thanks to Dana for continuing to share uh, images of her uh, trip with us, and we'll continue to see some for the next couple of weeks. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit descend upon you all and be with you all, now and forevermore. Amen.